Picture an African president, dead or alive, whose presidency transformed millions of lives. For many of you, that president probably wasn't a product of the ballot box. And if they were, they were later accused of being dictators who didn't respect democracy. About 60 years ago, the West exported virus to Africa, imperial presidency and imperial legislators. This governance virus has been rotting African nations from the inside out ever since then. In 2011, during Abdullahi Wada's presidency in Senegal, his son Karim, as energy minister, handed out questionable oil and gas licenses to Petrotim, a company tied to Frank Timis, the controversial entrepreneur. These shady deals lacked scrutiny and raised conflicts of interest alarms. But when the waters were cast aside by voters in 2012, a glimmer of hope emerged under President Makisol, promising a fresh dawn. But alas, these hopes staggered, stumbled, and met an untimely demise. Makisol's brother Aliu partnered with Timis, the same shady entrepreneur, and allowed him to keep control of the energy projects. At that juncture, voters could only complain at the barbers and barbecues, but they couldn't kick out the president. The legislators were in the president's pocket. Makisol had become Abdullahi Wade. The same corruption, different presidents. Same song, different musicians. That's why Africa needs a new governance system that shines imperial presidencies for transformative leadership at all levels.